may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel. Share, subscribe, and like this video. Make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. So here we are the day after the eclipse. We told you to keep your eyes up on Jesus. There's a lot happened yesterday that we're just now starting to find out. With all the earthquakes and everything that happened yesterday, and some things that happened up in the Northeast that we can't even talk about. But one of the biggest things that happened yesterday during this eclipse, now remember God was warning me about this thing for a while before it happened is that the Palestinians were working on getting into, uh, brought into the UN. This was happening and in the United States yesterday at the UN. The Palestinians are trying to become a member of the UN during that eclipse. That's not coincidence. They're trying to get to that Tuesday solution was what the main topic was in the UN yesterday during all this. See, that's what I said. While everybody else was freaking out I'll say, and mad and angry, they didn't realize there were some things happening that God was warning us about. But they wanted to, it was all about them and what they thought it was supposed to be. And if it wasn't what they were supposed to be, nothing happened. That's just not the way it works. We've become, we've started to realize that God is doing a lot of things at one time. And that's what a lot of people miss. Now, with this thing, what happened with them at the UN yesterday, trying to get a, to become a member of the UN, the Biden administration is pushing for that. They're the ones trying to get this thing going here in the United States. So that's what God was showing us, and that's why there was an X that was marked over us yesterday, and the Aleph and the Toph, which is the beginning and the end. So when you... That's why I told you, just keep your eyes on Jesus and it will start to it will start to unravel and you'll see what's going on. I want to thank Cindy for sending me this Reese tree. Everybody wanted to see it. Ain't that cute? I put this with my coffee at, behind my coffee pot. Thank you, Cindy, for sending that. Uh, yesterday was more than what we thought it was. Even more. Tons of earthquakes yesterday. That is God letting us know that he's moving. That's why I told you to take, don't take your eyes off of it at all. Now it says here, high intensity war in Europe is no longer a fantasy. It says the EU top diplomat has warned that the U.S. defense umbrella could soon cease to cover the whole continent. Full scale uh, military conflict in Europe has become more likely due to the standoff with Russia. The EU high representative for the foreign affairs said yesterday he claimed while warning member states against relying on the u.s to defend themselves several other european officials have cited a heightened military threat in recent months with the uk defense security uh, grant shapes saying last week that the world is moving from a post-war to a pre-war state due to the alleged threat and merging from Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. That's the four big ones that God warned me about over two years ago, that they have a coalition, and that coalition is now formed. Says uh, Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk made a similar pre-war assessment in March. Speaking at a forum gathering in Brussels on Tuesday, Burrell claimed that the possibility of a high-intensity conventional war in Europe is no longer a fantasy and the bloc must do everything to avoid it. It's too late for that. The EU top diplomat alleged that Russia poses a growing threat to the continent. That's already in play. Citing that the conflict in Ukraine accused, uh, accused Moscow of seeking and destabilizing the Union. The Union's already destabilized. 
According to Burrell, why military conflict in Europe is not imminent, it's very imminent. Imminent, imminent. Not going to start tomorrow. It definitely could start tomorrow. See, Satan has got these people face to face and convincing them that they can they have to go to war. Now, these people think that this ain't gonna happen tomorrow, next week, but I'm here to tell you. It's very soon. It's sooner than what these people even realize. Because when Satan pushes the button, and God's going to let him, this is all going to break out, and it happens quick. See, what they don't know is that Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran have a plan. They've been working on this plan for a couple years. That's what I'm getting told by the Holy Spirit. And they're going to act. It'll catch these people. What they think is, is years ahead, it's going to be very soon. And they won't know what to do. It will be quick. And the only thing they'll have to do. That's why nuclear weapons will be used. Because they won't see it coming. And it will be so fast that they're not prepared for it. And they will have to use nuclear weapons. That is Satan's plan. Listen to me very clearly as I'm sitting here. I know a lot of people out there is asleep. But this is his plan. He's going to catch NATO. Everybody asleep. And this ain't, this ain't two years down the road. This is happening now. These four nations are going to move quick before next year ever comes. They, they're going to get this thing done. It's in their plans, and they know how to do it. That's why Russia is massing this ma massive army on the border. I mean, over, over three million, and China has just as big numbers. When this thing goes hot, and it will go hot in the middle of no one, nobody expects it, it'll be too late. Maybe depending on who is ruling Washington, we cannot rely on American support. What they're saying is they're waiting for if Trump would ever get in. That's what they're talking about because he said there wouldn't be no wars. He added that while NATO is as irreplaceable as ever, Europeans could start building their own pillar within the, within the U.S.-led bloc. The diplomat acknowledged that Brussels' uh, stance on the conflicts in Gaza and Ukraine is not fully shared by many non-Western audiences. They, they just want a two-state solution. That's why they're going to fail. Burrell's uh, remarks follow suggestions from numerous Western civi uh, civilian and military officials in recent months. Russia could attack NATO within a few years. It's in a few months. They will be caught off guard. Mark it down. It will happen. They will be caught off guard, and most Americans will be too. I've already seen it. Many others have too. And everything that we're finding within, and I know there's a lot of people out there trying to get us to explain the Bible code. We can never explain it to you here. It's not something you read in the Bible. It's hidden inside the Bible. We try to explain it to people. People wouldn't get it going right over their head. Now, some of the first ones, some of the best Bible coders in the world are out there. Some of them we've lost from death and everything else, but the Bible code is real. And it's not easy, and there'd be no way explained to try to get to you. Now, I'm not that great at it, but I can go in there and check people's work. And you got to be careful also with it, because some of these people that dive into the Bible code teach works. And that's not the gospel. So it's like a double-edged sword. You want to use some of these guys to be able to get that information to you, but some of them don't teach the right gospel. Now, it doesn't mean that the Bible code that they're using is wrong. The Bible code's correct, because I check it. But they teach the wrong gospel to go along with it. And that causes an issue also. you got to know how to rightfully divide the Bible or you confuse people. See, when you're saved, you don't need to be in agony all the time. It's not what the Bible says. You need to be you're set free once you know the truth. Is that Jesus died for us all and we're all sinners. And then throughout, without his blood, none of us get in. But people teach that, oh yeah, you can get in. It's easy. You know, you just got to. Do your own works and everything else. And the Bible pretty much tells you, if you do it that way, it's a filthy rag. We're none of us perfect. Only one was perfect. And that's why he did what he did on the cross for us so we could get in. We could spend eternity with him. The people today, all they want to teach is exactly what the Jews had an issue with, with Jesus. They want to do it themselves. It's the same thing with the church today. They teach works. That's all they teach. It's all about you. Now, you're the only way. And it's not a lot of people's fault because that's what we've been taught since we was in Sunday school. And not only until you start really diving in and put uh, a lot of effort into being able to 
rightfully divide the Bible, the, who he's talking to at the time, as he's talking to the Jews, he's talking to the Gentiles. Once you figure that out, the Bible is opened up to you, and then you can understand it. That's why if you ever try to teach grace to people that teach works, it's like it makes their brain explode. They can't handle it. They get mad. They get angry. See, Satan keeps them in this state of confusion and anger. They can't stand themselves because, see, they know they're not right, and they it, they can't stand it. It drives them insane. That's That's not God. You should never be completely miserable. And if you notice that people teach works or try to go by works, they're miserable. They think every time they go outside and stump their toe, they're going to go to hell. That's not being set free, what the Bible says. When you're set free is when you realize you are a sinner, that Jesus cleaned on the inside. The inside of you is clean. And once you're sealed, you're sealed. Then you're set free once you realize that, because I accepted the gift. If I didn't accept the gift, yeah, my sin would put me in hell. But I accepted what Jesus did, and I have faith in it. And that's what set me free. And now I'm sealed. See, once you realize the truth and what, and the Bible does teach this. But see, they want to go by what the Jews did. Same thing that the Jews teach. They want to go by it. For some reason, mankind thinks it's all about them. It's always about them. And their works. And that's what's going to get them to heaven. And they're going to realize a horrible, horrible nightmare very soon. That that won't get them in and they're going to be stuck here. It's not about you. Once you accept that you're a sinner, and it's not about you, it's all about Jesus, then you're saved. And then you're set free. You don't worry about the stuff that they worry about and the stress and every time that they fail. Paul fought with that all the way to the end. He did. He fought it. But he said, thank God for what Jesus did. Of course, none of us would get in. None of us. Now, with all this going on, says date set for the Rafa offensive. Now we talked about that last night. Netanyahu, a coalition partner, has threatened to pull support from the Prime Minister should he fail to attack the Palestinian city. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his government has set a date for a major ground operation in Rafa, the last remaining Palestinian shelter in Gaza. The Israel leader is under pressure from both uh, from the close ally of the US, which sees the, the promised uh, offensive as a major threat to civilians, which they don't care about them civilians. They don't care about their own people. And for members of their own coalition, they just want a two-state solution. They don't care the Palestinians at all. Who demand military action. Some 1.3 million, most of them displaced from the parts of Palestinian enclave, was are eliminated to be, or estimated to be, uh, crammed into that city, which is located at the Gaza border in Egypt. Uh, says in a short video statement on Monday night, the prime minister said that achieving a victory over the military group Hamas requires entry into Rafah, the elimination of the terrorist battalions there. It will happen. There is a date. And I guarantee it's probably the 10th. Could be wrong, but just got a weird feeling. Here, that is when Iran attacks. Earlier this day, Israel's national security minister, Ben Gravier, issued a ultimatum to Netanyahu, stating that if that if he decides to end the war without a broad attack on Rafa in, in order to defeat Hamas, he will make a man have a mandate to continue serving. See, so he will not have a mandate to continue serving as prime minister. West Jerusalem has declared the elimination of Hamas, which organized a deadly incursion into southern Israel last October, and its primary goal. Netanyahu has previously claimed that the Israel Defense Force (IDF) has eliminated. 19 out of 24 of Hamas battalions. Now, last Sunday, the IDF announced that it would be pulling most of its uh, ground forces out of the southern part of Gaza. The move will give soldiers rest in preparation for the future mission in the Rafah area, Defense Minister Galan said. Critics of Israel's tactics say it's a far cry from the precision targeting of Hamas militants, which is now West Jerusalem portrays it. Over 33 Palestinians have been killed more than six months of hostilities. Now, in that little area, and that's, I know that's a big number, but it could have been in the millions. But Israel, what they don't tell you is they put out leaflets, everything. They knocked on doors and told people, hey, we're going to attack this area. Leave it. They don't tell you that. See, uh, the United States and all these nations, they just want a two-state solution. They just want to divide Israel down the middle. 
because that's what the Bible says they'll do. And eventually they'll get that, but not while we're here. We're going to leave soon. But that's their goal. The devil wants to divide them. The devil hates the Jews. See, if he can divide them, then he thinks he can eliminate them. That's what he's going to do. And that's what the United States and all of them are doing right now, is trying to get this done to eliminate the Jews. And it's going to backfire. That's why the X was formed yesterday. Critics of Israel have talked about this quite a bit of times, but compared to some 1,200 Israelis that was killed in the Hamas massacre, nobody talks about it. They don't want to talk about that. Last week, Israel targeted a convoy of humanitarian groups, a humanitarian group in the World Central Kitchen in a series of drone strikes, which killed seven aid workers, which America's done way worse. Says U.S. President threatened on Thursday to reconsider Washington's support for Israel, which gave us the X. It changes its approach. Israel has since reopened its border crossing to allow the in Gaza reported a surge in the number of trucks loaded with crucial supplies entering the blockaded territory after claiming for months that it is not preventing the flow of aid. And they haven't. They've been getting aid in there quite a bit. But see, what they do in the press is they try to swing that against Israel. That's not them. That's Satan. That is what's happening. They're swinging that to literally betray Israel as the bad guy. That's what Satan does. And he's using our government and everything else to make sure that this happens. Our press is doing the same thing. They're swinging this to make it look like Israel is the bad guy. And it's not. It's just the devil getting everything done that he needs to have done. What did yesterday have that everybody was looking for? Well, the Palestinians... Becoming a U.N. charter was huge. And that would give them a whole lot more power than they've ever had. And it will put more pressure on Israel. And it, that, because that brings in a lot more nations to put pressure on Israel. Satan's trying to get them to buckle and let Hamas stay. Israel's not going to do that. They're going to go into Rafa, just like he said they would. And when they do, that is going to turn all these Arab nations against them, including Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan, which is the only holdout so far. And that's what it talks about in the Psalms 83 war. Little confederacies of all these little Arab nations will try to take Israel, and they will fail. Just like Iran will fail in this final battle between them and Israel. They will get their butts kicked. Because remember, they have the Jericho missiles. They always will have the upper hand, and they have God on top of all of it. They're not going to be defeated, okay? It's not coincidence yesterday that Damascus was the main news line or news article that Iran is also going to use Damascus as a launching point against Israel in this retaliation. Retaliation. Could this be the day that Damascus is gone in an hour? It very well could be. If Israel detects nuclear weapons in Syria being launched at them, they're going to take it out with their own nuclear weapons. This could be what we're looking at at any time to happen. The eclipse, like I said, it marked the day that all this stuff would start to roll out. That's what we found. People's had the dreams, the visions. Some people had a lot of stuff about the solar eclipse. They just took it. They just took the information wrong. A lot of people dreamed about the rapture during the eclipse, but what it was meaning is that it brings the rapture of the things that unfold after today or after yesterday. See, you got to be careful when God gives you dreams, because if you get on here and say, well, I dreamed that the rapture was on the solar eclipse. This doesn't mean it's going to happen on the solar eclipse. It just means that it's going to roll out after the eclipse. But see, people, they jump on here and start talking this stuff, and it just makes them, it just makes it worse. You know, we got to be careful, especially in these last days. Why I tell you, just keep your eyes on Jesus right now. Do not quit watching the watchman that are out here bringing you the news because right now from this point on it's very important that you don't miss any days because things are happening the earthquakes and everything it's not coincidence god is speaking and he's yelling at us screaming at us constantly that this is coming okay that's why it's very important for us to stick together now more than we ever have and support each other because we are in the last days Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. He died, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Trust the blood of Jesus and call out on him today before it's too late because time is running out. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, 
for another day, Father. Thank you for bringing us all together as one big family that we can see this and we know what's happening. We're awake. And thank you for letting us be awake in these last moments in Jesus' name. Ask for you to protect the watchmen and watchwomen out there all over the world on all these networks. Some of them lost their channels yesterday for certain things they said. So that has begun again. So protect them in these channels and their families in these last days in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you do for watching over the week, the innocent, the hungry, the homeless, and get them what they need before the rapture, Lord. We know we're getting ready to leave here soon, and we thank you for it, Jesus. Also, Lord, I ask of you to watch over all the ones that come against the channel, come against me, that you're with them, Lord, and lighten their hearts in these last days, in Jesus' name. I ask of you to watch over the Jews in these last days. We know, Lord, that Jacob's trouble is starting to roll itself out. Protect them in these dark days ahead, in Jesus' name. I ask of you also, Lord, in the name of Jesus, all these people that come here each and every day to put their loved ones in the comments. That you're with each and every one of them and they will be saved and they will turn around before it's too late. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just putting a roof over our head and food on our table, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. Thank each and every one of you for being here each and every day. Like I said, we got to stick together now more than ever. This is the most important time in human history. While others teach that you got plenty of time, that is not the truth. We are running out of time. Day by day, the time gets closer and closer that the rapture of the church will take place. Yesterday, with all the earthquakes in diverse places, with all the stuff with the red heifers, it's all there. All the signs are there. The eclipse was just icing on the cake. While many people thought that was the day, I did not. I knew what it was. It was a harbinger of judgment that is coming. We are here to bring people on the ark. And that's what we got to do in these last days. As many as we can grab and get on there is going to be better. Because we don't want to see anybody left behind in these last days because we know the tribulation is any time now. Any day from here on out, from this day forward, it can happen that the tribulation will begin. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.